<laughs> All right, my guy, dude. So it's awesome to finally get on this podcast with you. Thanks so much for uh, having me on here. So you know me personally. We've known each other for what? Fucking 12 years now, I feel yeah. like. 12 years. So uh, for those that are listening that don't know who I am, my name is Dylan Bear. I am a registered dietitian. I got my master's of science degree at The Ohio State University. Um, it's what, seven and a half years of schooling. So I love that for me. And I am the owner of uh, Bear Aesthetics. So for those of you that guys that don't know what Bear Aesthetics is or who we are, we're an online dietetics coaching business that has a specialization in bodybuilding and bikini athletes, but we are not limited to that. We essentially coach anybody that needs some help with their dietary assistance. And we hone in on the specifics as far as micronutrients go and just giving you badass results while feeling good and confident in your own skin. Oh, that's a beautiful elevator pitch, man. I love it. Hey, hello. <laughs> so yeah, like you mentioned, we've known each other for quite a long time at this point. Um, I think I was like 17 whenever I met you, to be honest, because I started college whenever I was 17. So known each other for a really long time. I'm almost 30. Uh, so yeah, we are, we are yeah. definitely, we're getting up there, but um, no, man, I actually kind of want you to start talking about like when you, uh, you founded BA, how that yeah. process started. Um, like what some of those challenges initially were like whenever you, cause I know that you started BA as you were going through dietetic school. So like yeah. you're super fucking busy trying to juggle all this stuff, but I'm sure not a lot of people really know like that origin story of BA. Okay. They probably just know what it is now, which is obviously really fucking dope. Um, but if you want to talk about some of that, uh, I think that would be really, really helpful. Yeah. So let's rewind a little bit. So I got my bachelor's of science degree at Ohio state in nutrition and business. And at the time, I really didn't know what the hell I wanted to do with a nutrition degree. And a lot of people that want to do something in nutrition don't realize that you really can't do much with a nutrition degree. And that's kind of at the time when I was discussing with my advisor, I was trying to figure out my options of what the potential possibilities were to do if I wanted to be my own business owner or, you know, potentially work for a company with a nutrition degree. And that's when I discovered the field of medical dietetics or dietetics in general. And she brought up to me as far as like what I wanted to do. I had a vision of, you know, having my own online business where I can coach people all over the world and be and uh, you know, be the head of their dietary intakes and, you know, write macronutrient and caloric and, and meal plan prescriptions. So that's what she told me to, to pursue, um, you know, potentially pursue another degree in dietetics to become a registered dietitian. I was like, oh, that sounds badass. So tell me more. And she said, based upon my bachelor's degree in nutrition, I would then take that and go into a master's of science degree and hone in on medical dietetics and more nutrition specific uh, classes and courses in regards to the nutrition metabolism and fat pathophysiology of certain nutrients, which I was like all geeked out about. Um, so once she told me that, that was my next step. If I wanted to really, you know, to make the most out of my education and, and get to know as much as possible for all my clients, if this is where I wanted to pursue a future career, I was like, fuck it, let's go ahead and do that. And that's when I applied for, you know, the master's program. I did what's called a coordinated medical dietetics program to become a dietitian. So basically uh, in order to become a dietitian, you need 1200 hours of clinical um you know, clinical hours of rotations, which is a shit ton when you compare it to a lot of other health professionals out there. I think like, you know, registered nurse, uh, I know there's a lot of registered nurses out there. That's one of the, the most popular um, careers in the health industry. I think they need what, 400 some internship hours. I think that's what Lauren, my wife, um, who is a registered nurse, I think that's what she told me. So to become a dietitian, you need about three times that amount of interning hours, which is crazy. But Anyway, the, my coordinated program allowed me to have that built-in internship into the master's program, which if you're becoming a dietitian or you are listening to this and you are a dietitian, you guys know that the internship actually is usually an additional part of any kind of degree. And you have to actually apply for internships on top of that. And honestly, the dietetic internships is one of the hardest parts to get accepted for. They're so damn um, you know, challenging and competitive that a lot of people that want to become dietitians apply for an internship and they get rejected. Um, so the fact that I had my internship already built in my master's program when I got accepted was uh, really dope. Um, and it was just one part of the entire master's program. It took two and a half years where I had also to write a thesis, um, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, later. But 
Anyway, first semester of grad school, that would be what fall 2014, I believe. Um, you know, I had this vision of what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go with my my online business. And the first semester of grad school is when I actually established Bear Aesthetics. And I, I'll never forget all my friends, very supportive. However, I had a lot of people telling me like, yo, dude, you're fucking crazy. You're in grad school. You're wanting to start a business. Good luck with that. And I said, you know what? Thanks. I'm going to fucking do it. And I'm going to prove to you guys that I can do it because anybody that knows me knows that anything that I do, I'm fucking passionate about. And a lot of times my passion gets pretty fucking intense and carried away, but many more times than not, I'd say it helps me out in the long run. Um, but I was really passionate about starting this business. And, you know, I had a, an idea of that if I could start a business while going to school, I would eventually, you know, have a platform to jump on once I graduated that I could run full throttle with. And that's exactly what I did. So uh, I created Bear Aesthetics. I started to open up my clientele as far as in-person training goes and started coaching some of my really close friends as far as competing for bodybuilding shows. Um, and one of my first ever clients was a mutual friend of Bryce and I's, Andy Perkins, um, <laughs> as well as, uh, you know, Chris Beal. They were some of my first two competition prep athletes. But Andy Perkins was one of my very first athletes that I prepped for a bodybuilding show. So we're going way back. Um, but, you know, seeing people, those were my two main guys that kind of got my feet in the bodybuilding industry and people saw the results that they got. So then that sparked more interest of, uh, Hey, you actually do this. I actually want to do a bodybuilding show too. So that kind of got word of mouth got out and started to, uh, um, people started to express interest in uh, what I do and they wanted to get shredded too. So that also just, you know, further helped kind of grow my business the first several, uh, months into my graduate career. Yeah. And Obviously now BA is is successful. You've been able to to grow the business for the last you know, fucking decade at this point. Um, you have moved beyond having Andy and Chris as your only competition clients. Thank God for you. And yeah, right. now, yeah, now you, you've moved up in the world and you have uh, some prettier faces to look at, at least as far as your clients go, which is great. Um, and, you know, I think that one of the things that sets you and, and BA in general apart has been the strategy that you use as far as diet and nutrition and prep in general goes. And I kind of want to turn this into a little bit more of a conversation of what the kind of incumbent ideas on competition prep looked like before, like, let's say a decade ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, yep, what, did, what did those diets look like whenever someone wanted to compete in bodybuilding or any kind of physique sport? What were the coaches prescribing to them? compared to what BA does and what you do? Yeah, absolutely, I love this question. So this um, was actually the main reason that I had the passion to start up BA at the time, because we're talking about 2013, 2014 era of bodybuilding, where there was a lot of, um, you know, one-sided approaches and very close-minded coaches at the time. Like, you know, this is what you have to do if you want to get on stage, if you want to get shredded. And I think everybody, or most people on this uh, podcast that are listening understand what I'm talking about as far as like, you got to eat five to six meals a day. It's got to be the typical chicken, ground rice, broccoli kind of meal plan. You can't eat this this, that, um, that, you know, it's it, uh, excluded uh, most foods um, and many food groups, especially dairy products, breads, God forbid, if you eat any kind of uh, bread or gluten, you're going to get hella fat or fruit too. You can't do that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much what all the coaches at that time were prescribing their athletes. And it was so funny because there was all these coaches and teams out there that were having these meal plan approaches and they fucking all looked identical. The only difference is like the, the team name or the client name. And it's so funny because a lot of coaches would end up, you know, having the same shit prescribed for their many different clients. And a lot of times that's why I started getting a lot of uh, clients um, from other teams was because they would actually um, put the wrong name on the, the meal plan because it was the same fucking meal plan, but then they would forget to put the client's actual name on there. And they're like, what the fuck? This is ridiculous. Um, so there's a lot of cookie cutter approaches at that time. And not to say that there's still not a lot of cookie cutter approaches now because there certainly is. Uh, however, I think with a lot of teams like their aesthetics, 
that are really, you know, vocal about the, you know, many ways that we can go about getting ready for a bodybuilding show. I think more people are becoming more aware of, you know, there's more ways to do things than the the old school approach as far as eat this, not that following, a you know, five, um, you know, meals a day, very restrictive meal plan. Um and that's, again, like I said, that's the main reason and driver and motive of why I wanted to create bare aesthetics at the time, because I knew we could do things different. I knew that if I pursued a master's of science and I got my degree in dietetics, I could further learn more um, about the body, human body, pathophysiology and how, you know, people in, um, respond to certain nutrients and metabolize them. And as I started learning more, I realized that you know, the human body doesn't necessarily see foods as their names. Uh, it really just notices them as a nutrient profile. And that's when I uh, was starting to really, you know, prescribe for all of my clients more of a, uh, you know, flexible dieting approach via tracking your macros. Or at that time, it was starting to be coined if it fits your macros, which I really don't like utilizing that term because I think a lot of people you know, try to fit shit food into their macros by using that terminology. So I like the term flexible dieting more so they can be a little bit more flexible with their food sources and intakes. And uh, when it comes to their overall macronutrient prescriptions, but back around that time frame, 2014, especially in the bodybuilding world, no teams were doing that. And that's where, you know, I really marketed my clients and our clients results at BA. Like, yo, we can get you shredded as fuck eating the foods that you personally enjoy and having that flexibility adopted to your lifestyle, not only is it uh, very efficient and very effective, but it's fucking fun too. And that's what this shit is about. It's fun. It's sustainable. And it's not short term or short lived. It's actually something that you can adopt for the rest of your life. And that was the biggest thing that I think a lot of people were drawn to when it comes to, you know, um, when they wanted to be a part of bare aesthetics and they were like, wow, I, and today it's crazy how many applications I see. I, probably one application a day that we get um, is their interest is enjoying VA is not only from the, for the community aspect, because we have an amazing community that is very supportive and everybody wants to be a part of, but they see how fucking happy our athletes are on stage. You know, everybody's like, wow, your athletes and your girls especially look very good. But not only that, they don't look like they're, they're dead on stage. They look like they're glowing. They look like they're healthy. And, you know, that was a big, you know, priority. And that is a big priority for all of our athletes today. And it always has been since day one of VA is to, you know, figure out methods that we can dial in our clients to get the best results possible, but also in the healthiest manner possible. And there is a difference between, you know, or I think a lot of people hear that and they're like, well, bodybuilding isn't healthy. And you're exactly right. Bodybuilding isn't healthy um, when you're getting to those stage levels of leannesses. But there are certainly healthier approaches and methodologies that we can adapt throughout that process to get our clients and athletes there. And there are definitely a lot of things that I could touch on there. Um, One of the big things that I think has, uh, has, you know, just really contributed to your ability like you said, to get your athletes on stage, have that success, be able to turn tons of people pro at this point, which is a monumental feat. If for anybody listening that doesn't know, that's a really, really fucking difficult thing to do in the bodybuilding world. Um, I think all of that is contributed by your approach. But like you said, it's like the healthy side of things. It's like the ability to not burn out doing a prep. It's the ability to not come, come out on the other side being so fucking dysfunctional that you can't even live a normal life anymore, much less try and be a bodybuilder, right? Like that's what the experience of prepping was like 10 years ago. Really and, was. Like how many, dude, how many people did we see that were just so fucked up after they would do a prep, they would do a single prep with one of these like shitty local coaches. Yeah. And then they would just fade into obscurity. You'd never hear from them again. And a lot of, a lot of them looked really good too. They would look really fucking good through this entire prep. They yeah. would underperform in their show. And then they would just disappear. Yep. And and I think that it, it still happens so fucking much today yeah. and it pisses me off. It really does. Um, because I think a lot of those coaches that still have that old school mindset, um, they just the, the truly, true, very honest opinion is they only care about show day for their athletes. They don't give a shit about their athletes, hormonal health or their mindset or the psychology of the athlete. Um, 
after that show. Um, and that's something that, you know, we really do take pride in because the post show phase, as you and I both know, Bryce, is just as important as the days and the weeks and the months leading to that show. Um, it really is so important. And that's, again, why, you know, we, by establishing a sustainable approach and not eliminating all these foods, really gave the our kids, our athletes, a, a healthier mindset to competing, to dieting, to getting ready for the show to when they compete, not only do they do well, but then they do well with their dietary intakes following the show and through adopting things like reverse dieting protocols, um, where they're not like binge eating and, you know, rebounding severely after their show. And I think, you know, going back to, you know, 10 years ago when, um, you know, the flexible dieting approach was truly unheard of, Everybody would, I'd say, fuck, I'd probably say 90% of the people that were competing were rebounding severely after their shows because nobody knew how to reverse diet or or gradually um, increase their calories following a show because, you know, they'd go into the show all that very restrictive low calorie meal plan and then they're once they're done competing like fuck yeah i'm done so i'm going to go back to eating the way that i was before even entering a contest prep and we know that as you get leaner as you die down on low calories our metabolisms naturally decline and we need some time to get that metabolic capacity back up and we can't you know stay in the same amount of calories that we were before entering that dieting phase um so you know the post dieting phase again we can have another whole podcast on this um but you know we'll just keep it short and just know that we do take in consideration um not only the sh- the weeks and months leading into the show but also the weeks and months following a show, um, you know, not only for the athletes, metabolic and hormonal health, but I think, you know, primarily it's for the athletes, psychological health, which that is something that I think a lot more coaches really do need to pay attention to because the psychology of the athlete is what dictates what's how the days go, um, you know, day in and day out leading into a show. Um, and not only just talking bodybuilders, I'm talking, you know, anybody that's dieting, we always need to focus on the psychology of a client. Um, it's truly, truly, truly so important. I think so many coaches neglect that when it really needs to be on the upfront of priorities and to, in order to optimize the client's progression and happiness and health. Yeah. And actually that you brought that up. I actually talked to Liana the other day. And one of the big things we talked about was how to know whenever you're ready for a prep and it's always back to psychology. It's always back to your headspace. Like, and like, Liana's a perfect fucking yes. you know, example yeah. to talk about that. So for those that don't know who Liana is, she was on a podcast with Bryce, you know, a couple, well, a couple of weeks ago. Um, she's one of my um, top bikini pros and has been a coach uh, for myself for going on four or five years now. She is absolutely amazing. And um, I really love her for the fact that she is very vulnerable when it comes to the mental health side of things of competing. You know, she's coached hundreds of clients um, herself. And, you know, with her personal experience, when it comes to um, mental health, when it comes to prepping and dieting, uh, her personal experiences is, is, is amazing. And I love when she talks about this topic because more people do need to talk about this topic, but I feel like not as many people are wanting, willing to be as vulnerable as Liana is. And that's why I truly love her to death for being able to share her personal experience. And I want more people to hear that so they can understand it can be done, um, especially if you have the right coaches and right resources available. Yeah, Liana's fucking great. We both love Liana. Um, but dude, I actually I wanna I wanna ask you a few questions just because yeah. we're, talking, we're talking about some uh some old school coaches, some mm-hmm. pretty you know, closed-minded thinking, some some things that just should have died out a long time ago. And I know that I've seen some pretty fucked up protocols, some pretty bad things that have been presented to me where I just like see it and I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? You know, like what, what is this? Happens all the time. Yeah. 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 So uh, is there anything off the top of your head that you can think of as like a, a pretty tangible example of a protocol that a client brought to you from a previous coach and you're like, Oh my God. Who the fuck thought this was ever a good idea? This person should be in jail. Dude, we're going to need a whole fucking series. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Over the protocols here. Because, um, you know, I, I mean, it happens on a daily basis. We're getting shitty ass protocols. I'm just like, you know, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm like, Lauren, come over here and read this shit. This I know. Is like, I can't make this shit up. Um, but actually, I'll tell you one that I got, uh, what, two days ago, um, Sunday? Yes. I got an application from a, a bikini athlete. 
on Sunday, who is um, 20 weeks out from her show. Uh, she's going on, I think, her second season of competing. 20 weeks out from her show, and she didn't name her coach, um, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> but <laughs> she 20 weeks out from her show and is uh, currently on, you'll never get, guess this, uh, 15 milligrams of Anovar a day. And... 20 micrograms of clin already a day too, which, you know, 20 micrograms, that's a good amount of clin, but to be starting clin utero 20 weeks out for a bikini athlete um, is absolutely insane. Um, but 20 milligrams of, or what, yeah, of VAR is 20 weeks out. Fucking ridiculous. Um, we typically like to keep oral anabolics uh, to, um, you know, a low amount as far as dosages and durations go. But, um, you know, for bikini athletes, you know, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? So I told that athlete, I was like, even if you don't fucking hire me, um, which you probably will, uh, I'm like, just trust me, you need to drop the shit right now. And if we take things over, you're, we're going to shift protocols as far as supplementation goes. Um, and her calories were already pretty damn low too um, for 20 weeks out. But you know, that was just one example that I got this week as far as drugs go. There's a lot of drug pros and calls that we get. But from a, a dietary perspective, I can remember one um, one athlete that I, I recently got to, um, you know, they were X amount of weeks out, several months out and already under a thousand calories a day doing two hours of cardio a day um, and shit like that. It, it's crazy that it's like, what the fuck for you and I? But it's it's very common. Um, it was more common, you know, 10 years ago, as we were discussing, but it's still so fucking prominent nowadays, just because people nowadays with social media, they all think they can be coaches because they've done a bodybuilding show themselves. And a lot of, I think a lot of guys too, they do a show or something like that. And they, they're like, okay, well, you know, this is what I have done. So I'm going to prep, you know, athletes in this manner. And I think something that a lot of these guys don't understand is like when they're coaching females, the female body is drastically different from the male body and the male physiology. Um, so you can't be pushing these protocols as drastic or as extreme as what you do for, for a male um, athlete. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the drug side of thing, the drug side of things, I think, is um, is it it's a its own beast, you know. Like that's that's something we could probably talk about for a really long time. And the the fucked up thing is, is that not a lot of people actually understand what a bad drug protocol is. And even even people who are experienced, like even even people who should know better, they're still pretty susceptible to believing and trusting a coach that gives them a really shitty protocol because they want to believe that the person that they're paying for the service knows what they're doing. But the shitty reality is that a lot of times coaches don't really know how to solve problems, except with lower calories, more cardio and more drugs. That's how most people, most coaches prep. They just don't know any different. And especially with things like meal, or meal plans is the idea there is you just control everything and then you're like, okay, let's remove, you know, 30 grams of rice from this meal. Let's remove, you know, a tablespoon of peanut butter from this meal. And they think that that's like the easiest way to do it. But in reality, like that's just the lowest hanging fruit. They're not teaching yeah. their clients anything. And I think that's something that I know that you would echo is it's not about doing all of the work for your clients. It's not about looking at everything in terms of numbers. It's about educating your clients on how to do it themselves. Okay. Like that, that's the most important part. Um, and especially things like drugs, right? Like how, how big do you guys, uh, how big of a, of an importance do you guys place on things like, like blood testing and, and getting labs done? Yeah. I'm um, glad you brought this up. Because yeah. That's something I was going to talk about as well. Um, that client I was just talking to you, um, that sent an application on Sunday. Um, that's the first thing that I asked. I was like, okay, you're running these drugs. All right. Well, did you ever get any labs drawn or did your coach recommend that you get any lab work done? She's like, no, I've never had lab work in my entire life. I'm like, okay, face palm. But again, to us, that's like, what the fuck? But to many coaches out there, if not most, they don't even give a shit about labs because why? The labs aren't going to get, um, you know, the, for one, the, most coaches truly do not know how to interpret yeah. labs or physiology. That's the number one reason why probably. Um, but again, most of them don't necessarily give a shit. As long as their clients are looking the part and giving them that trophy at the end of the prep, that's all many coaches, unfortunately and sadly, care about. Um, but when it comes to lab work for all of our clients and athletes, it is uh, very much so a priority that we we make sure 
um, we get for all of our clients across the board, not only prep clients, but lifestyle clients as well. Um, and then just kind of utilizing a prep athlete, for example, if we're wanting to kind of look at a prep for an athlete, we will uh, get a baseline lab draw before we start prep. And if we see that something is um, of an alarm uh, as far as results go, uh, we'll, we won't start a prep. And and that's something that we do take pride in. If we feel like we need to figure out, uh, you know, something going on internally and we feel like, uh, you know, it's the best not to enter a prep, we will certainly tell the athlete, yo, we, I think we need to focus on these numbers and getting your health um, at an optimal state first before going through a dieting phase. Because if your labs are not at an ideal spot before starting a prep, they're only going to worsen and digress going into a contest prep because calories get so low and just, you know, body fat set points become very low and you're not going to be um, optimizing your hormonal health at all, especially if you start adding in some uh, performance enhancing drugs on top of the process. So, um, you know, we'll always get a lab strong before entering a prep. And if things look good, then they'll get a thumbs up from us. Yo, everything looks great. Let's go ahead and jump into a prep. Uh, some For some athletes, we might run a, uh, you know, mid dieting, um, you know, lab jaw, um, especially if things aren't going in the manner that we, you know, have hope for. We'll just kind of get another secondary look while, uh, you know, after several weeks or months of dieting. And then, um, you know, typically after the athlete is done competing, uh, we like to wait about four ish plus or minus two weeks post competition to get another draw um, to see how things are looking. And I typically don't want to get labs drawn immediately following a show just because we know the body fat is so low. They're coming from a rough set point. So I would like to at least get four to six weeks of uh, getting calories back up, get body fat up a little bit higher too before getting those bloods drawn at that time. Yeah. So just for clarity, um, do you also prescribe? natural clients to get blood work done or is it just enhanced clients all clients across the board um yeah. because everybody has hormones that need to be taken into consideration um absolutely 100 percent. every client needs labs drawn and honestly if we see that in the application that you know one of our application questions is you know do you have any labs if so please attach them and if not we'll get on a phone call and we'll be like yo this is a priority for us um especially if you've never had labs drawn before we're going to get you some labs we're going to send you a, a you know a list of what we would recommend and typically for that first lab draw if they've never had any the list is going to be pretty damn comprehensive and then we can kind of be more selective in the in pre later lab draws um but we want to see labs for all of our clients whenever possible because you know as, if the physiology is not good how do you expect to see some physical progression you, you really can't or it's going to make the process so much more harder than what is truly necessary yeah and what are a few things that you look for on on lab results that would be indicative of someone being ready to prep maybe like if you see something during a prep or you're like oh shit you know maybe this is why you're not making the progress that we were anticipating with like your your protocols that you're on and then you know after prep like what's something that you could be looking at to say all right you are ready to go into this off season you're ready to maybe even go into another prep like you're recovered from your previous prep or are there anything any markers specifically or any um any like you know tangible classes of markers where you can like give a little bit of insight there that you guys really look at yeah. So, um, you know, we're going to look at a, a wide variety of things, obviously, um, you know, from the CMP panel to, you know, lipids of a client. Um, I actually just, you know, had a client, a male client that's an enhanced athlete, get some labs drawn because uh, we wanted to start a prep. But his lipids, so lipid panel being cholesterol, LDL, HDL, BLDL, things like that. You want to uh, clarify CMP as well? Do you want to clarify what you mean by that? Complete metabolic panel. So um, a lot of your basics there. But um this client, in regards to his lipid panel, um, his, his HDL was in the teens um, and his LDL was through the roof. And that's and that's just because, um, you know, I haven't been working with this client for very long and his previous coach kind of had him abusing drugs, yeah. um, you know, crazy high dosages for way longer time frames that were truly necessary. Um <laughs> and it, it, they, his labs still haven't um, recovered from that. And that's a, another reason why I was like, you know, let's before he was like, let's just start a prep. Let's start a prep. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. But first let's get some labs drawn. <laughs> and he was like, fuck, okay, whatever. Um, and I'm glad we did because it, you know, 
he's probably not too happy about it, but we're, we're putting a, a pause on this prepping and we're really putting focus on getting his lipids in a, a more healthy state before doing this, especially because, you know, during prep, um, you know, adding more anabolics, he is an enhanced, ath- enhanced athlete. So we'll be keeping some, you know, drugs in throughout the entire process. If not increasing the dosages going into a show, uh, it's only going to worsen his lipids moving forward. Um, so, you know, lipid panel is something that we obviously take into consideration, uh, you know, thyroid and metabolic panel panel something that we do want to take in consideration too um you know a lot i think a lot of um a lot of people like to claim that they have a slow metabolism or they have like thyroid issues that aren't seeing the amount of progress that they they want to see um in reality a lot of people's thyroids are, are totally fine actually um i see sometimes when people like have abused maybe thyroid hormone a lot of guys um that have come from a couple different coaches uh, came to me you just really abusing the the cytomel or the T3. Um, and that's taken some time to, uh, you know, regulate their, their T3 and their natural thyroid production. But, um, you know, thyroid panel is something that we do want to take into consideration too, before entering a prep, make sure that everything is, is healthy and, and, a, uh, you know, normalized state there. Um, but kind of going back to that, like I said, it's, I get so many people uh, that are, you know, dieting, and they're like something I, I just I feel like my my body's not responding in the manner that it should be. Well, first of all, you know, this shit is slow, uh, but everybody just thinks that they automatically have a, a thyroid issue or a, a down regulation of their thyroid. And, and that's usually not the case as well. You know, it's usually um, what I find is uh, there's so many variables, of course, but I think it's a lot of lifestyle factors that people are just um, oblivious to or not taking into consideration. But that's where a good coach comes into play. Um, a lot of people I find that that aren't progressing in a manner that they think they should be most of the time just are not sleeping the way that they should be. I think sleep is probably one of the most overlooked variables when it comes to seeing progress and just living life in the healthiest way possible. Um, but you know, I'm now going on a tangent, <laughs> but um, I mean, these all things are, are very pertinent details that we all take into consideration. It's not just like a blanket statement, like this is what we look for. This is what we look for. And then we also look for this, which leads to this, this, that. And that's something I think a lot of people need to understand. It's there's so many ways to go about things. And that's why it really does make the world of a difference going to a coach that understands all these details And like you said, Bryce, we are all about educating our clients throughout this entire process. So, you know, when we get labs, we will educate our clients on, you know, hey, this looks good or this doesn't look good. Here's what we need to do. And here here's why we might, you know, not have the most optimal results. Um, And we do protocol changes. We like to give the explanations for why we're doing these protocol shifts. Um, And we get a lot of clients. um, you know, coming to us because they see how much education we provide all of our athletes. So we want all of our athletes and clients to get the best experience possible. And we're, we're teachers. I'm, I'm a teacher at heart. I'm a dietitian. I love to explain things. Um, and, and by explaining things, I feel like the, the clients are more um, able to follow protocol and they're more confident in the protocols that are set in place instead of just giving, you know, a black and white answers of your or statements of this is what you need to do, you know, eat this, not that ready go. And the, I feel like the clients are just like uh, left in the dark as far as, you know, uh, this is okay. I'll do this, but why the fuck am I doing it? You know? Oh, but that's perfect. That actually is a great segue into kind of want to sprint to the finish here because I know that, that you have to, to go here in a, in a few minutes, but yeah. um Let's talk about some signs of bad coaching, some tangible signs of bad coaching. Um, I'll actually start because you brought it up. Yeah. Coaches that do not allow their clients to ask why. There you go. I mean, that's that's, that's also one of the the biggest, biggest things that I see um, is a red flag. And we'll tell all of our clients that, you know, right off the bat, like we want you. um, I just had a client call yesterday and. I told her, I was like, yo, you have already have access to my phone. And she's like, wow, my previous coach, um, or the coach that she was working with mm-hmm. now, she's going to hire me. She's like, my previous coach won't even, uh, the most that I've done is send emails back and forth. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we like to communicate with our, our clients and really do provide those detailed answers and responses uh, for why we do things. Um, not just like, you know, trust the process. And yes, we do want our clients to trust the process, but we want them to trust the process and all the right reasons and really trust the process because they too are as confident in the protocols that we prescribe them, you know? Yeah, oh, for sure. And 
That's a, that's a big one. That's a big one. Like the communication aspect is huge. Like, have you ever heard of coaches that have put character limits on emails before? Character limits. Oh, okay. have you not heard this? Well, I mean, I heard here, you know, please, I've never heard like a certain character limit, yeah. but um, I will, you know, keep response time shorts or no videos, um, you know, back or like no, um, you know, no phone calls, no text messages, shit like that, which, um, you know, depending on the, the coach's protocols, you know, I can I can understand to a degree, but character limit, I, I can't I've, say I have. I've heard character limits on inbound emails from clients, like as in. You cannot send an email that is longer than these characters because that is going to take me too long to read. So oh, condense it. Too, too long to read. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what it is. It's, it's a too long to read. You know, I've I've, I've heard oh, the character God. limit coaches. Um, so yeah. no, I I think that's a, that's a really good way to end, honestly. And I know that like there's a lot that we can continue to talk about. Oh, there, there's, um, there's so much. Yeah, and I, I think. I think it's, it's better to keep it open ended anyway, because we're going to do this again and we'll probably talk a lot more about some shitty coaching and also maybe keep it a little bit more optimistic at some point. Talk about like what to look for with good coaches, right? How to know how to know that you're you're with a good coach, how to find a good coach, how to set yourself up to be a good client as well. I think those are things that you and I could probably talk in depth about. But yeah, man, I'm going to let you go. But first, before you go, I want you to plug yourself real quick, allow people to to be able to find you, plug your socials, all that good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys are interested in coaching or working with one of my dietitian or healthcare professionals, whether it be for uh, competition prep or just general lifestyle coaching, you can go to our website, Bear Aesthetics, B-A-I-R Aesthetics.com and fill out an application and our team will be very responsive and attending your application. Our response times are very, very quick. Um, so do fill out an application if you're interested in that. Um, and then you can look me up on Instagram, at Dylan Bear underscore rd or our team instagram is um at bear aesthetics and then um other than that if you guys have any questions for me directly you can reach me uh via email at ceo at bear aesthetics.com and uh yeah i'd love to chat beautiful all right dill i'm gonna let you go thank you so much and we will definitely have to do this again here soon all right my guy much love Bryce, and i'll talk to you later brother thanks for having me all right.